sure that the mic is actually being used. So I, uh, I used uh, Geo's video for our Zoom service as our cat down or our beginning because he's so beautifully in his Spanish tongue saying those three, two verses that we're going to say in English later in Spanish. And so a tribute to service and following Jesus is our focus this morning. We welcome those that are on Facebook Live, those that are on Zoom, as well as those that are present. We thank God for the moisture that is being given, that's glorious and thankful. And today we uh, also celebrate Christopher and Ed Edward's birthday, uh, Dora May's birthday as well, Candy Alvarado's birthday, and then Brianna Oliveri has her birthday on the 26th, Dick Eagles has his on the 26th, Melissa Brent has hers on the 27th, Michael Entz has his on the 28th. Crystal Miller has birthday on the 29th. Lavon Caden has a birthday on the 30th. And only God knows what will happen with yoga. <laughs> it just depends on the roads and whether it's passable. But Tuesday and Fridays we will try if the roads are passable for Nancy to come from where she comes from, which is a lot. Um, this morning, let us stand as we sing the first verse of Jesus Calls Us.
Normally she cuts it, so I'm not sure why it's not, not that way. You may be seated while I figure this out. Get us back.
We come to a time of prayer, expressing our joys and concerns. And I believe everyone that is present is aware of the tragedy that struck our town this week and the loss of a young wife due to carbon monoxide because of a fire in the trailer. Bringing to the realization that something that may have been avoided with carbon monoxide detectors in a fire detector. So as citizens of this area, that is one thing that we will be discussing when the coffee with the chief happens on February 6th downstairs. For there is no reason for anyone not to have that protection. The family and the community grieves together. The police department is asking for you, if you're giving contributions, you do it in the form of gift cards. They do not have to be in Visa or MasterCard gift cards. They can be in the form of family dollar or um, Dollar General or even KNG. They will need all of it. Right now, they're being provided some things through Rainbows Inn, as well as uh, uh, the social services that step forward to help with uh, some of the needs. But the family had no insurance, to my knowledge, and so they are trying to bury this young child and establish another place to live because the place is not inhabitable. So that is a top priority in our prayers this morning. Are there other prayer requests that we wish to bring? It's good to see Vicki. Happy late birthday. Linda had her birthday too, huh? What? Not your birthday? I was thought it was the years that was I saw down there. I know Linda had a birthday this week. Myers. Vicki Myers, that's what it was. Okay. Jerry Miller, who will have a surgical procedure tomorrow. Jerry Miller? No, Jay. Okay, Jay Miller? Yes. All right, let's remember Jay. Anyone else? The family of Sharon Esterbrook Miller, she passed away. Cheryl or Sharon? Sharon. Sharon. Okay, got it. We can text Sandy Curtis off. She's doing real well out there. Awesome. That is a praise report. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Kathy with a C or a K? Okay. All right, we'll remember her. Anyone else? All right, let us go to God in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to this precious time of our service together where we raise our hearts and our voices to you. Crying, Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up those in need of prayer for surgery and health concerns, especially Jay Miller as he goes through this procedure. And also for Kathy as she slipped while doing her job helping a patient. Hmm? Lord, we ask that you would be with the other health concerns of our community. We pray that you would be with the police department and the fire department, who I'm sure are very much affected by the loss of this young wife. Be with our school, the teachers, administration, and especially the children 
who were friends and acquaintances. We thank you for our first responders and pray for protection for them, especially those, Lord, that just rush into harm's way, our EMTs, our doctors, our nurses, and especially our military, who we are finding out have contracted COVID by doing their work. Lord, I ask that you would be with Bob Gailey, who is struggling with COVID as well, and several others that I've been made aware of in the Rio Grande area that have gotten, they think, the new strain of the virus. Be with our essential and non-essential workers, especially our farmers, our truck drivers, our warehouse workers, those that work in the stores and banks, those that help keep things going, the gas stations everywhere, Lord. Be with our nation and the authorities that are local, state, and national. Help them in making wise decisions. Protect us, Lord. And we lift up the whole world that is struggling under this pandemic. Give us strength. Be with pastors and religious leaders who are doing their ministry in ways they never thought was possible, in ways that may not feel comfortable. Let us remember if we follow you, no matter where it leads, you will give us the comfort we need. We ask that you be with any who are suffering or in trouble, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, Lord. We ask that you be with those that have been affected by the disasters in this pandemic. Unspoken requests, Lord, that are on our hearts. We lift up Bobby Abbott, Dan Bigley and family, LaVon Caden, especially her birthday this week, Lord, Colleen Chambers, Linda Clutter, Jacqueline Collier, Dora Mae Crawford, it's her birthday today, Lord. And we give thanks that Sandy can be removed from our list and give you praise. We lift up Marilyn Eagles, Randy Burstein, Isabel Geigel, Tracy Gunther, B. Gutierrez, who expressed her thanks for the prayers that have been given for her. Debbie Hall and family, Lita Haney, Sue Jenkins, Charles and Tosh Kiesler, who are my cousins, Ben Lewis, who is my brother, Eva McLean, Judy Medina Baca, Dakota Miller, the Miller family in Iowa, Amanda Myers, Vicki and Gerald Myers, and we celebrate her birthday this, today, Lord. Wayne and Alice Phillips, Roy and Vicki Raslip, and it's so good to see them here this morning. Sherry Robbins, Marilyn Roberta, Joe Roker, Charlene Schaefer, Harold Schaefer, Gwen Schumacher. And we celebrate that Luke is cancer free from his brain cancer. And Lord, we pray for continued protection. For Cloetta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Byron and Amy Ulrich, Wendy Wallace, Linda and Dick Wilson. And Lord, our hearts are heavy for the loss of Sharon Esther Brooke Miller. Lord, be with her family. Be with the family of Elizabeth Lino in this tragic fire. Bobby Abbott, I'm sorry, the family of Bob Abbott, the family of Dick Herman Zephyr, the 
the family of Patrick Bigley, the family of Wade Collins, the family of Bob Combs, the family of Arlene Davis, the family of Dave Garcia, the family of Eric Garcia, the family of Debbie Greenbank, the family of Walt Lambert, the family of Eva Lovato, the family of Linda Majors Tamaris, the family of Joe Molinado, the family of Cheryl Mix, the family of Shirley Myers, the family of Richard Poole, the family of Don Toes, the family of Lorenzo Oliveri, and the family of Eleanor Ward. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayer. We thank you for the moisture, but we have heavy hearts for those that need prayer. Hear us as we pray the prayer to, that you taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is um, done from the Psalter, so the light print will be Sue and the dark print will be um, the congregation. Old Testament is Psalm 62, 5 through 12. <clears throat> For God alone my soul waits in silence. For my hope is from God, who alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God, who is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in exhortation. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. Power belongs to God. And to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you repay all according to their work. The epistle is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. This is what I am saying, brothers and sisters. The time has drawn short. From now on, those who have wives should be like people who don't have them. Those who are sad should, like, should be like people who aren't crying. Those who are happy should be like people who aren't happy. Those who buy something should be like people who don't have possessions. Those who use the world should be like people who aren't preoccupied with it because the world in its present form is passing away. Gospel is Mark 1, verses 14 through 20. Please stand as you are able. Jesus' message. <clears throat> After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, announcing God's good news, saying, Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust his good news. Jesus calls the disciples. As Jesus passed alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing net. At that very moment, he called them. They followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. You may be seated. So 
we learn from the psalm, our psalter, that our Lord is our fortress and our rock. And rather harshly, we learn from the epistle, that time is short. Don't put your efforts into things that are fleeting, pretty much. It's a hard passage. And this morning, we're going to focus on the gospel. The gospel of follow me. Trying to understand Jesus, follow me. Let us pray. Creator God, we come before you this morning asking for you to open our eyes, our ears, our minds, and our hearts to the message you have for us today. May the words that I speak be the words the Holy Spirit wishes me to speak today to us, to build up this community of faith and not to tear it down. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I would propose to you the acronym of the Lord as a way to remember how we can follow Christ. L stands for listen and look, for we cannot hear the call of Jesus if we are deaf and blind to his voice. So what keeps us deaf? and blind from our Lord. Perhaps it's the anxiousness to speak instead of listen, to express our opinion instead of listen to the opinions of others, especially if we don't agree with those opinions. In our study this week of James, we found the passage that's really something for most of us to pay attention to, that we should remain silent and listen rather than pushing forward and speaking. And I would ask you to join this pastor in working on that issue. Perhaps it's our busyness that you stay so busy at what you think is important, but you're too busy to see and to hear. Perhaps you surrounded yourself with things that are not of God, Where, whether it's music or TV programs, media, the news, books, whatever. When we focus on darkness, it's hard to see God's light and to hear God's music. So take time to slow down bridle your tongue so that we can listen and feel God's glory in the nature around us through studying his word through prayer seeking and uplifting and inspiring music arts and media so L is our first word our first letter. O is for ovulation or ovulate. Now you may be asking yourself, what is ovulation? Well, the dictionary has different meanings, but the one that we want to focus on this morning is spiritual ovulation or the gift of God through the Eucharist. It is through our baptism we recognize the precious gift God has given to us. And in turn, we give our gifts of obligation to God. Things like time, talents, service, or money. In some denominations, an ovulate is a laity a layperson or clergy who sets themselves aside or apart for devoted holy living. Catholic and non-Catholic monasteries 
open themselves up to those who wish to become devout believers, including missionary of uh, Methodist monasteries, for which we don't see much of here in the United States, but are in England and Europe. While either of these words would draw us to the recognition of God's gift of mercy and grace in our lives, it is ultimately the work of Christ that allows us to follow him. And what more beautifully expressed than in the Lord's Supper. The third is R for response. We must respond when our Savior calls. And you notice in this gospel story, the disciples immediately left fishing boats, their fishing boats, and followed Jesus. We know later on in scripture that when uh, that uh, uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law is actually healed. And we wonder, perhaps it's because he followed Jesus that she was able to be healed in the first place. We see the focus on making fishers of men most of the time. But today we want us to look at the words, follow me. Come, follow me. We know that the disciples, including the 70 brothers, were very important leaders in their communities. And these were hobbies. These were family businesses. Why were Simon Peter and Andrew ready to leave? And the Zebedee brothers ready to leave for someone they had never met. And today in our beautiful hymn, Lord, You Have Come to the Lakeshore, we see the words seeking neither wealthy nor wise ones. And I think, what would I do? Would we eagerly follow or would we use our procrastinating excuses to give reasons why we can't follow immediately? It snowed today. I have to do something this week. And I've shared with you before a Southern Gospel song called Excuses, Excuses. And we laugh at that song, but there's truth in it. That we are very ready with our excuses rather than our actions sometimes. So how do we respond and prepare ourselves to respond the way God would want us to? Well, John Wesley gives us three ways. So that we can be ready and we can respond. Now, many of you know these are three simple rules. I don't know if you could quote them or not, but I will quote them for you. Again, James encourages us to build up the body of Christ. So the first one is do no harm. That means not being a stumbling block for someone and what you say or what you do. And remember that nothing is hidden from God. The second one I love. Do all the good you can, in all the ways you can, however you can, whenever you can, wherever you can, for as long as you can. I remember it going to Scarrett Bennett in Nashville, Tennessee. It's across the room from the upper room. It's an older facility. And over the entryway, this passage in King James English, with the vowels and the bees, is over that entryway. That is a lofty goal for all of us to follow. And the third one, we like to stick with love God. Stay in love with God. But it doesn't stop there. It says, stay in love with God 
by attending to the ordinances of God. Ordinances like assembling in the community in the body of believers. That means coming to church. Fasting and praying, something many of us need to learn how to do properly. I'm raising my hand. Studying the scriptures, giving alms or offerings, developing holy living. Now, I would say that John Wesley, if he were here, would tell you, if you abide by those three simple rules, God would tell you when you arrive in his presence, after your work is done here, well done, my good and faithful servant. So the last and final letter is D. To dedicate or devote yourselves to following Christ. Determining that you are going to follow Christ no matter what the circumstances may be. Making the decision to walk where Jesus walks. And you notice I didn't say walked. Because he walks today. Following him wherever he may lead. This letter reminds me of one of my favorite Christmas carols we rarely sing. Good King Wenceslas. It was written in the 10th century and was probably based on a real king around the celebration of the Feast of Stephen. We learn of a master who is so willing that all should attend his feast that he goes out to implore the serf to come. Neil's poem for this carol reads partially this way. My liege, he says, I cannot go on. The wind freezes my very blood. Pray you let us return. Seems it so much, asked the king. Was his journey from heaven a wearier and colder way than this? I hope, sir, answers not. Follow me on still, said the king, Wenceslas. Only tread in my footsteps, and you will proceed more easily. The servant knew his master spoke not at random. He carefully looked for the footsteps of the king. He set his own feet in the print of his Lord's feet. What a beautiful image of our Lord and Savior walking ahead of us, asking us to follow the steps, his own footsteps, and feeling the warmth of his love to inspire us to go through anything toward him. And I would like you to see how Neil portrays this not as the king being the master and Lord and Savior, which we greatly see, but that he was a king and a man who was living and being the image of Christ for this serf. That is what we are called and compelled to be. Studying James this week, there's a passage in the Wesleyan Bible that says, in James, Christians suffer because they follow Jesus, God's divine. Yes, and in much of the church, salvation is something that you believe or feel. In James, salvation is when you talk and you walk like Jesus. So Jesus is only mentioned one, or twice sorry, in James. James exemplifies the communal, congregational, practical consequences when a congregation dares to obey the one who commands, follow me. Most of us know the beautiful poem, Footprints in the Sand. And we remember those lines that there may be times when we need to be carried. And again, not just seeing the Savior here, 
but seeing us as those that are helping others. We may need to carry one another through times that are hard for us to go through. In this community, what is going on right now is a way that we can do that. Do it in big ways and small ways, it doesn't matter. We can support one another. And it's beautiful to see that, that pew filling up and I hope we completely fill it by next week. So that we can help the community with the food needs. Many of you have already given gift cards and contributed online money to help this family. And some of you have brought money today. God knows that. Even in the small things, because Lewis cleared the parking lot so you wouldn't trip or fall. So Miss Linda wouldn't have another spill. It's in little things as well as big that we can follow Jesus. So following Jesus our Lord, to recap and to sum up, we can remember the word Lord. L for listening and looking for the call. O for the ovulations, the gifts that not only we acknowledge God's gift to us, but we give to others. Respond by doing no harm, doing good, staying in love with God, and D, dedicating ourselves or devoting ourselves every day to hearing that call and following that call. So following Jesus our Lord becomes something that we can do through the strength that only God can give. He gives us to be the light in a dark world, the hope for the hopeless, to shine out God's amazing glory for the world to see, and to sing out God's praises for all to hear. Amen. Again, I would like to thank those of you that are present for your offerings that we may leave in the pew. A gift to Sue since she's here. And those at home who may wish to uh, mail their contributions to the center post office box or get online or make a donation through text and swatch to mail theirs to the post office box. As a pastor of this wonderful church, both churches, my heart is overfilled with your love and your generosity. I feel privileged and honored to serve you. And you teach me how to be better, a better Christian every day. Let us stand and sing our hymn of commitment. It may be a hymn that you're not familiar with, but the tune you are. And please pay attention to the words in this song, for they are so poignant as call for commitment from the sermon.
your home with your household, follow me. At school and work, follow me. In everything you do this week, follow me. And as you do, remember that I will, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Our sending forth him is turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hi, how are you? 